Hey guys, GoForce Online, and in this video I want to talk about the members of the Roundtable Alliance. Now they are the group, the guild leaders, from all the most powerful guilds in the city of Akubara. So they all came together under one banner to serve the city. Now at the start they were pretty much forced together by Shiro, using blackmail and other tactics, but it's as a unit together they are very very powerful. Now the guilds involved are DDD with guild leader Krusty, the Black Sword Knights with guild leader Isaac, the Honesty with guild leader Ainz, the Westwind Brigade with guild leader Sujiro, Marine Agency with guild leader Michitaka, Roderick Merchant Guild with guild leader Roderick, Shopping District 8 with guild leader Karashin, Crescent Moon Alliance with Guild Leader Marielle, Grand Dior with Guild Leader Woodstock, Radio Market with Guild Leader Aiken, and lastly Log Horizon with Guild Master Shiro. Now Shiro just recently created the guild when he attempted to form the Roundtable Alliance and only had four members at the time. Now the guild has grown very slowly over time raking up 10 members by the end of Season 2. Now, Shiro as a guild leader is, is very new at leading with politics, so as the strategist for a team or for a squad, he's very easy with directing people, telling them what to do, telling where to stand and what needs to happen in order for them to clear content. But to deal with people more personally as having their issues or if they're struggling with something or just politics in general, this is all very new for him and it's not something that he enjoys. But in order to survive in the world, in order to make the world better, he formed the guild Log Horizon and this is where it stems from. Next up is Krusty from the guild DDD. Now he is a very smart strategist and is well known for organizing major groups. He is also the general that leads the forces of the round table into combat. So any large scale organization, Krusty leads it. He is also the unofficial face and leader of the round table alliance. So if anybody looked towards the table, they're usually addressing Krusty. Now he's also got a softer, delicate side and can be quite charming. Um, he does start dating a princess during the show, so it just shows you how well his people skills are and how well he can um, interact, manage and control people. Next up is Isaac from the Guild of Black Sword Knights. Now Isaac is an elitist and is very particular about who he has joining his guild. Now, he very much wants to be the best and will do anything in order to achieve it and you see a bit of that at the start of the show it does chill out a bit closer to the end and has more compassion towards npcs but at the start he's very much the best and wants to stay the best and next up is Eins from the guild honesty now at the start of the forming of the round table he was very much a quieter character um he's not as big on the scene of the combat guilds as you have with black sword knights and ddd um, but very much a strong guild uh, to start with. As the show progresses, you will just slowly start to hate him. Right? Um, he's just way out of his league in what he tries to do. But he tries his best. He's just not quite qualified. I'm not going to spoil too much, but he does ruin a lot of things coming up in Season 3. And the last of the combat guilds is the West Wind Brigade with Guildmaster Sojiro. Now Sojiro is very much a ladies man and girls just absolutely adore him through the show. Now Shiro does sometimes use this to influence, manipulate people, but Sojiro is just there to help people out. So very, very kind-hearted guy. Uh, most of the guild members in his guild are women and still a very, very powerful warrior guild with very strong commitment and very strong alliances. Marine Agency is the largest trading guild in all of Akibara, with the guild master Michitaka. Now Michitaka is a very strong hands-on trade person, um, enjoys building things and putting things together. And with the new world as it is for them, trade and new and engineering is very powerful skills to have. Now he's very rich and very good at what he does in maintaining the largest skill has a lot of resources available to him, have a lot of 
assets available. So all in all, a very rich, very powerful, well-organized tradesman. Roderick from Roderick's Merchants Guild is very much a scientist. He is in charge of research and development for the round table. He's very interested in how the world works and the physics from the real world and the game world they mash together. And his goal is to find out how these things work. So if anything large needs to be built or designed by the round table, he's very much the guy to ask. His department mostly deals with research and development and any large projects that need to be undertaken. Now he is in charge of the second largest trade guild in all of Akibara. So yeah, he has a lot of resources available for his research and development. Next up is Karashin from Shopping District 8. Now he's got the third largest trade guild in all of Akibara and specializes more in the finer things like fashion. So if you want to look good, he's definitely the guy to talk to. He always likes making a good deal and making more profits. So chasing that margin is definitely what it's about. Marielle is the guild master for Crescent Moon Alliance. She's a very caring person and likes to see people reach their full potential. She does have a relationship with Natsuko as the series progresses and they make a pretty cute couple together. The next guild master is Woodstock from Glendale or Grandior, depends on which translation you're watching. Um, nothing specific, special about him. Um, he was there at the initial meeting of the smaller guilds trying to merge them together into a large organization, but that ultimately failed. Um, he does have a dragon as a mount, so that's quite interesting. You see that at the end of season two. The last one on the list is Aiken from Radio Market. Now in real life, he was a streamer and he's played the game for a very long time. Um, he's always tried to help out newer players, trying to get to progress through the game. Now in the game itself, he's quite intelligent. Um, he's an engineer. He helped produce a fake arm with real mobility. So definitely go to Guy if you need to get something fixed. Thanks for watching guys. If you have any ideas for videos that I need to do in the future, please let me know in the comments down below. If you like the content I'm putting out, please hit that like and subscribe. Take care and be safe. Bye.